I suppose soft tissue sarcomas are not really in the power view of dermatopathologists, but on the other hand, we see so many connective tissue tumours in the skin and very occasionally a soft tissue sarcoma will present in the skin that it's appropriate enough to show this to show this case. It's a lovely example. Uh, it's a lovely tumour that was kindly shared by uh, Antonina Kalmakova of uh, CSD Healthcare in Kiev. She really does share some wonderful cases with me. Now this tumour actually it reminds me of a of an anecdote which you might find interesting. Oh, at least 30 years, maybe a bit more ago, uh, I was working in London at St. John's Hospital for Diseases of the Skin and also at St. Thomas's Hospital. And at that time, I, I was responsible for the connective tissue tumours that the soft tissue surgeon excised. And it was much easier in those days because there weren't so many entities but uh, anyway, with the progression of time, I acquired a, an assistant. I suppose in, in American terminology, you would have to call him a fellow, but in fact, he was studying for his MD thesis on um, electron microscopy of soft tissue tumors, and he was a very bright guy. And um, he soon got the hang of the histopathology of soft tissue tumours and really was very good. And the interesting thing is that this young guy turned out to be Chris Fletcher. So anyway, uh, time went past and um, we were working together for I think about two years. But anyway, one day he came into my office and he said to me with a very serious expression, he said, Philip, I, I need to talk with you. And I said, well, what do you want to talk about? And he said, well, I, we need to discuss soft tissue tumours. And I said, sure, well, what do you want to say? And he said, well, he said to me, you know, Philip, I think you would be much better off if you, if you just did the dermatopathology and, and left the soft tissue tumours to me because you're not really very good at them. And to be honest with you, now you might think I would have been offended or shocked by this statement, but actually it was with great relief that I agreed with him because I hated them. I had found them so difficult and he was so good. So that's, that's, how, that's how Chris's soft tissue tumor pathology really, really began. Uh, in fact, as a dermatopathologist, although he would cringe at the very thought of that, but that's the truth of it. Anyway, having said all that, so let's have a look at this uh, tumour. Well, we can see very clearly there's a great big lump of blue tumour and on top of it we can see connective tissue stretched around it forming a pseudocapsule. And uh, we'll look at this at, at, at higher power. Now look, there is there is the most beautiful field that you'll ever see. This is this, this is just so gorgeous. Now you're all young folk, and and uh, you've no idea what a herringbone tweed suit actually looks like. But and yet you'll use the term. This is typical herringbone pattern, and I suppose it does relate to the bones of a herring in in a sort of a way. But we use it more typically to describe a herringbone suit, in which the woolen fibers are plaited together in these interlacing bundles, as you see here. So there there are spindle cells in that direction, and that direction, and then at ninety degrees. They, they come out of the screen at you, and we'll look at it slightly higher power. So that's a typical herringbone pattern, and in, when I was a young man, we all wanted to have a herringbone tweed suit because it was a sign of great dignity. In fact, people might think you were a banker, or better, better still, a broker on Wall Street. Uh, but anyway, 
that's beside the point. Well, what we need to do now is just have a, a thought as to what this might represent. Now, um, in my early days in, in pathology, um, we only had a few sarcomas to worry about. Life was quite simple. And mind you, it's not that it mattered desperately because there was no treatment available other than surgery. So no matter what sarcoma you called it, the offending limb or whatever would get chopped off and then it would be good luck to the patient. But nowadays that's all changed, thankfully, and we have to be more precise. And... Um, so what tumours do we, do we think of with, with a herringbone pattern like, like, like this? Well, um, first thing comes to my mind is it has to be nowadays, it has to be a monophasic synovial sarcoma because that's what this looks like. And in fact, that's exactly what this is. But what other tumours might look like it? Well, malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumour would be a jolly good differential. Um, fibrosarcoma arising in a background of a dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans would be another possibility. Um, you might think of lyomyosarcoma, although the basophilia of the cytoplasm would be against that. And... Um, as a last resort, and you might end up calling it a fibrosarcoma. Um, and I'm sure there are lots of other important differential diagnoses that the soft tissue tumor pathologist could add to, to my little list, but those are the tumors that I think of. And uh, this tumor's got lots of mitoses, but the problem I find when you're looking at a scanned slide there, there's one there, thankfully. It's always very difficult to find um, to uh, to find mitotic figures. Anyway, that th this is a very nice example of um, monophasic synovial sarcoma. I couldn't find any glandular differentiation in the tumor. Now, Antonina very kindly has done some immunohistochemistry. As you know, synovial sarcomas express keratin and EMA. They also express BCL2 and uh, TLE. So I'm going to show you this first immuno, and this is uh, EMA. And it's very strikingly positive. Uh, We'll look at this top bit because although it's near, it's near the uh, edge. I'll accept that it's it's really very striking. It's not a gorgeous, gorgeous field there. If you wanted uh, positivity with EMA and a synovial sarcoma, I don't think you could you could get better than that. And if we come away from there and just scan around the rest of the slide, you can see there's a lot of expression but it's not uniform not every cell is expressing of it an awful lot of them are so I think we can regard that as bona fide uh, EMA expression and then then we have TLE1 here now that's a nuclear stain so it's not as obvious when you first look at the, the uh, well I suppose it's fairly obvious but but anyway when we look at it higher power, what one can see that there's pretty strong uh, nuclear e expression. It's not TLE is not diagnostic of synovial sarcoma, but it's it's pretty close. So when you add the EMA and the the TLE, uh, I think one can be pretty happy that this is a synovial sarcoma, a monophasic spindle cell synovial sarcoma. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this case. I think it's a lovely case and I think it's quite educational and uh, thank you very much for paying attention to me.